In the last episode of Build Theory, we modified my Explorer chassis to accept a heavy-duty, 8-lug, independent front suspension axle, which will support the heavy Cummins diesel engine that I'm swapping into the small 4x4. In this episode, we will be designing and fabricating some custom linkages to help locate this axle under the car. Here's the Dana 50 bolted up under the Explorer chassis, and you can see it can still move front to back quite a bit. Now the thing that locates it front to back stock is the radius arm. This radius arm would sit on the arm, right where that coil is, and then come into the chassis there, and with that bolted in, it would stop it from moving front to back like that. So that's what I need is to make this radius arm fit those beams. But the issue is that this is too tall for those beams, so I'm gonna have to cut and weld all the mounts down. And two, the way it connects to the chassis is through a series of bushings. Bushings aren't bad, but if you really want to get a ton of movement out of the arm, then you have to crush these bushings quite a lot to get there. To make this arm work, I'm gonna have to cut that down, and I'm going to have to fix the way that it's mounted there, and I'm actually gonna have to extend it a little bit to fit there. Now, that's a lot of work, that's basically a custom radius arm. If I'm gonna have to make a custom radius arm anyways, I might as well make it better. Rather than using this whole bushing situation, I can use a heim joint, which will go all the way around in any location that I want while still having a decent amount of side to side movement like that. So I can swap that for a heim joint and then rather than reusing too much of this old arm, I will use some of it, but rather than reusing too much of it, I have some DOM tubing here that I will use. This heim joint fits reasonably well inside there. I can weld that together. And now I have an adjustable heim joint on one end with a jam nut. That bushing will be replaced with a heim joint and then I'll make arms out of this. Now, I can actually go even further than just those two upgrades. And in order to show you what I'm talking about, I think we're gonna have to go to the computer. What I've done is I've made a model of what the radius arm, essentially of the stock radius arm that was on the car. I know it looks a little different, but if I was gonna make this radius arm from scratch using just the tubing I have, this is what it would look like. Heim joints, there, there, and there. Could even add one here if I want some more adjustability. And this would be the functional equivalent of what's already on the car. Just to give a better perspective, this would be the brake rotor and the member that it's connected to and all of that. So this is what this radius arm would look like on the car. Now this cutout here, I actually did it at six degrees, which represents a decent caster angle. So if this were the setup that we were using, look what happens when I move this up and down. Now, there's two things that you'll notice. First off, this point gets closer and closer to that plane here the further I move it down. So the axle is moving front to back as it rotates through its arc. That's the first thing to notice. The second thing to notice is that the angle of inclination here Notice how when it's up top, it's at about six degrees. But as I move it down, it goes more negative and more negative and more negative until it's, I mean, within the difference between this plane and this plane is about 20 inches. So say I add 10 inches of up travel and 10 inches of down travel. Obviously that's a lot. That's not what I'm going for, but just for an example, if I had three degrees of caster here, I would have 10 degrees here and negative 10 degrees here. That's a huge change in caster as it swings through this arc. So that's one of the issues with the radius arms on this stock suspension. It would be better, in my opinion, to fix a couple of those issues. The longer this arm is, the less front to back movement there will be of the tire. So the axle will move front to back in the chassis less and less the longer this arm is. So that's why people extend their radius arms. So that's one of the easy things to do. Let's extend the radius arm. But how can we address this whole caster issue? Well, without getting into the kinematics of linkages and stuff like that, remember parallelograms from 
middle school or high school? Well, what is a par parallelogram? It's the top and bottom are parallel to each other, and the left and right side are parallel to each other. And that parallel nature of a parallelogram is important here. Let's look at the same radius arm setup, but slightly different. So let's imagine that instead of doing the one link that goes across, I run two links. And let's say that this top link is the exact same length as this bottom link, and this distance from here to here is the exact same distance as from here to here. If I do that, then as this moves up and down, these are always parallel to each other. As long as this is the same length as this, and there to there is the same length as there to there. As long as those lengths are the same, the sides will always be parallel. And what that means is that as the wheel moves up and down, notice that there's no change in this angle here. If I set it to six degrees, it's six degrees regardless of what I do with it. I can literally spin it all the way around. That angle does not change, which means that as the suspension cycles, my caster angle does not change. No change in caster angle. So that, in my opinion, is a huge design upgrade over the stock arms. And then the second thing that we can do, of course, is since we're making these customs arms anyways, we'll also extend them. So in my opinion, this design, a uh, parallel four link design is way better than the stock radius arm design. So this setup will give me an easy way to set my caster. It'll give me a way to fine tune the front to back position. I'll have at least an inch or two front to back. I can move it. It will mean that my caster angle does not change as the suspension is cycling up and down. And it'll mean that I can get a lot more travel without as much movement in the axle. Way, way better setup. It's probably extreme overkill for what I'm gonna be doing with this vehicle. It's not like I'm trying to make it long travel at this point in time, but if I'm gonna be making custom radius arms anyways, I might as well future-proof them so that they're as good as possible so that in the future, if I did go longer travel, the radius arms are already set up, I don't have to redo this work. And in my opinion, it's basically the same amount of work anyways, so I might as well just do the better arm. It's just a tiny bit of design work, and it's really not any design work. It's just make them in the shape of a parallelogram. That's pretty easy. Anybody can do that. All right, that's enough sitting down at the computer. Let's actually start building this thing. You can see right here, these are the tubes that I'm going to use to make these uh, radius arms or these links. You can see that's the stock radius arm. These are 36 inches. You can see they're quite a bit longer than that. What I need to do is get a heim joint on either end of this tube. One way that I could go about doing that is I could just put the nut directly in there and weld it. However, if I were to do that, you can see there's quite a bit of a gap there and it doesn't really fit all that tight. So I'd be filling a gap with weld and that's gonna make the weld bad and it's gonna be harder to get it straight. Not that it actually needs to be straight, that's kind of just a cosmetic thing, but rather than doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this other pipe I have that fits pretty much perfectly inside of that one. And I'm going to stick the heim joint onto that, weld that there, and then weld the inside tube there. So essentially there'll be a short sleeve on the end. So let's get to it. Let's get these heim joints on those tubes.
All right, I got a couple members made. I just wanted to point out real quick, the reason for having right hand thread there and left hand thread on the other side, when I turn it this way, the member gets shorter. And when I turn it this way, the member gets longer. It's just like tie rods or whatever. But what this means, not only can I lengthen and shorten these members simultaneously in order to move the axle backwards or forwards slightly in the chassis, but I can also say if I were to lengthen this one and shorten this one, I could even tilt it this way. Or if I shortened this one and lengthened this one, it would tilt it that way. What that means is that with the adjustability here, I can do a base setting of my caster angle using these. Typically on a TTB setup, the way you have to adjust your caster, you also adjust the camber. And so this will make setting the caster and camber much easier. All right, now that I got these linkages done, I need to make two brackets. The first one will connect it to the axle there, and the second one will connect it to the frame. add a caveat here. I've never really stick welded before. If you see me doing anything and you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, just remember, I probably have no idea. If this turns out not very good, then I'll just cut it off and TIG weld it because I do know how to TIG weld. I wouldn't recommend your first time welding being on suspension components like this, but bear with me. The biggest reason that I want to learn to stick is because TIG is expensive. And not only that, but this metal is some rusty garbage that I kind of pulled out of a field. TIG is really, really sensitive to rusty metal. While you were watching the snowfall, I took the liberty of whipping up another bracket. I'm starting to feel like I have to do everything around here. You can see it's just like the other one. The important point is that from there to there is four inches. The only difference on this bracket is it's about a quarter inch taller there so that it can clear the frame because this one will be going on the frame. So notice the important thing about this setup is with this one straight up and down, like how it'll be tied into the frame, if you look at the angle of this, it does not change no matter how far down or up I go. That's pointed more or less straight up and down no matter how much I rotate this. See with the other setup, if I hold this here and move up and down, you can already see that there's a big change in angle right here. That means is that my caster will not change as the suspension cycles up and down, which is exactly what I want. And it's easy to do. The only thing I had to do was make sure that these members are the same length and that that point to that point is the same as that point to that point. If I were to move this thing up and down about 20 inches, there'll be less than two inches of travel side to side. That's what these look like. 
This one's getting welded to the axle, that one's getting welded to the frame. So that's what we need to do next, is weld those up. So you can see I got that bracket welded on, and now I just need to connect it to the other side. You can see this mount here is kind of in the way. So what I need to do is just clearance this mount for these tubes. All right, YouTube, I give up. Overhead welds suck. They're terrible. They beat me. So I'm gonna have a real welder come and do this for me. My uh, girlfriend's here to finish out the weld for me. So hopefully these overhead welds won't be absolute garbage when she's done. As you can see, I decided to add this plate here and what that plate is for is if I do ever have to back over a rock or something I'm hoping that'll give me a fighting chance of getting over it but once again if that bracket ever ends up being too much in my way I can always cut it off and move it up here and then move that body mount all right I slapped a coat of paint on it and now here's a look at the final product here's what each side looks like when it cycles up and down Thank you for hanging out with me in my garage today. If you enjoyed what you saw, or if you learned anything, then please consider leaving a like. And if you'd like to see the rest of this Cummins Explorer build, then consider subscribing and sticking around. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.